Sergio, hey, congratulations on Blur's Day. Thank you for having me. Thanks. I think the most important thing to congratulate you is that this weekend it's uh, premiering at the Los Angeles Latino International Film Festival at the TCL, TCL Chinese Theater. Yeah, to Saturday 5th at 4 o'clock. Um, please join us because this uh, is, for us, it's a great event because screening your, your film, doing the, the, the world premiere at the Chinese theater is like a, going to a big temple, you know? It's like a get in there, we made it. So everybody's welcome. You know, the, the irony of premiering Blur's Day at, at a theater is that Blur's Day is a pandemic movie and you are going to be one of the first movies to actually to be shown in a theater with live people. How do you feel about that? Well, it's amazing. The whole journey of, of, of creating the movie was a, a huge uh, different experience for everybody. The, the movie started as a, as a concept for, for a TV series and then it was transformed into a film a script. And then we went, once we have the whole film, you know that the scripts are divided in three acts. We decided to give one each act to different couples around the world. So we end up having uh, a, a Asian couple in Hong Kong. We have a, a Latino couple in Buenos Aires. And then we have a, a North American couple here in Los Angeles. So let me backtrack a little bit. The concept uh, for uh, Blur's Day was, was for television before the pandemic actually started? Right, right. And then since we, we knew those, those, those uh, characters very well between Selena Martinez, who is my co-writer, and myself, we say, what about if we put those characters in this situation? How, how do, will they behave, you know? So it was kind of, you know, it was just part of the, the creative process. And then going in through, through the, the process of the, the actual filmmaking, it was really a bless because it was great. Uh, it keep my, 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 my mind staying, uh, you know, in healthy. We were uh, shooting uh, from seven o'clock at night to seven o'clock in the morning because we were shooting in Asia. They, they were 15 hours ahead of us. Uh, the DP was in Mexico City. The, the, you know, so we were trying to, it was, it was really literally a, a collaborative uh, international effort for every, everyone. So at uh, which stage of the pandemic that you actually decided to convert this story into sort of like a pandemic story? Did you, was it a few months after the pandemic started or, or was it quite a while? It was like a month into the pandemic um, that, that we decided to start this project. And the project uh, captures the first hundred days of the pandemic. What happened, the confusion. We touch um, several subject matters like uh, uh, gun control. We, we, we touch on, on um, violence and, 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 and some of the things that, that we were watching around us, watching that uh, happening to some friends of us. So we were taking pieces from different countries and different um, societies and trying to, to put that one on the script. I guess one of the things that begs a question is how do you get this project off the ground so quickly, especially during the pandemic? That must have been a great challenge. It was indeed. It, it, it was a great challenge, but on the other hand, you have all the world in the in, in all the time in the of the world, and, and and you have the computer, and you have the phones, and you start calling people. You know, I have a very strong uh, crew here in Los Angeles, in Mexico, and then we find these amazing uh, filmmakers in Asia as well. So it was like a, it was kind of difficult, a lot of challenge, but a new challenge, and and it, it tells you that that human beings cannot be cage and, and cannot be a stop of telling the, the stories that, that, that we are experiencing. That's amazing. How did you coordinate three different crews in three different countries without visiting <laughs> everyone? In Los Angeles, we did walk in into the, into the, uh, at the apartment. That was the only, and it was a very skeleton crew with all the, the COVID protocols. We, we were all very scared of doing it because, you know, I have kids and everything. And, and also the actors went like, a, 
lady opened the door to five completely strangers, you know, walking into the house. So it's like a, it was it was a, a labor of love to tell you the truth from everyone, and 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 it shows that if we get together and we have one goal. We are all the same. We we are all in this together, you know, and and, it, and that's the main goal and the main message on the movie. How did you get the cast uh, together so fast? Um, you didn't go through a regular casting process, did you? No. For instance, in in Facebook, I posted something on on a, on a web on a on a site that is uh, is, is um, uh, Asians in Hollywood. For the Latino couple, I did. Uh, I make a couple of phone calls and a friend of mine says, you know what, I know this couple, they're super cool, they're really famous and they're living in Los Angeles. And I'm like, whoa, those are exactly what I want. So I called them and they were on board. Most of them were really bored. Most of them were doing nothing. So when I say, you know what, I have a movie for you, they were like, okay, you know, we go for it. And then the, the, the American couple, I did a kind of regular cast but, but it was, uh, but it was, yeah, the, the casting process was, was like that, very crazy. Did you have to like train them to, uh, to do their own camera work or their own Zoom and all this kind of stuff? Because at the beginning, a lot of people didn't even know how to use Zoom. <laughs> yeah, we find out in the process with the, with the DP that, that I thought we, we, we were going to be able to do it through Zoom, but then we find out Zoom is 1080 in terms of quality and we want this product to go you know, to platforms like Netflix or, or Amazon, that they, they only take uh, 4K. So we say, okay, that's a challenge. So in every single country, let's say, we have to have a camera. The way that the, the, the cinematic language that we did was to, to pretend that the computer cameras were on all the time. So they were using the, the, the phones, they were using the computer cameras, and the security cameras that they installed because they were insecure. They thought that some, you know, there was some point that, that people start getting panicking because foreigners were going to come to their house and, and, and invite them, invade them. Uh, so, so in between those three techniques, we we were able to tell this very complex story. Now, was there a lot of improvisation um, because? That uh, that you were trying to get this project done done quickly um, through through the script and the lines. Yes, I usually uh, use the script as a blueprint only, and I from once we have something solid, with the plot points are in their places, then the next let's say evolution of the story is when I get together with the with the actors and it says, "What do you think about this scene? Let's talk about what is the objective of this scene." Okay, you don't feel comfortable saying that line. Okay, let's change it. Let's, but the, the once if if the objectives are there, I'm willing to change everything. The, I, I I'm I'm not a, a kind of director that sticks to every single word that I read you, or that I write. You have to say it. No, I'm very open to that. And in this creative process, you have to. You know, you have to let them go. You know, because one thing that it was a challenge is that. Three different uh, uh, couples from different countries, they have different concepts of acting. So my work as a director was to put them in tone of all of them. What is cool in Asia is not cool in, 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 in Latin America and it's not cool in North America, you know? It's completely different schools and how are you gonna put them all in one tone? And, and how did you manage to do that? Because, uh, because you're also talking about three different languages. Um, in the same film. Yeah, Chinese, English, and Spanish. Well, the, I do believe on the, on the school of, of, of less is more. You know, sometimes Asians go a little bit higher, or even Latinos, they, they love to scream. And they, so I, every time I go like, no, 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 let's, let's bring it down, you know, because, and then even with, with some of them, I see at some point I have to show them a clip of, so, of, all, of the other um, couples when we were shooting similar scenes, because th there's a, a point on the, on, this, on the story, on the, on the film that you will see that they are doing exactly the same thing because I wanna make sure that people know that that no, doesn't matter 
the color, the religion, or where you are. We are all the same. We are having the same feelings, you know? We are all afraid of the same things. So in those ones, sometimes I, I used to show them, I ch check what the other couple did in Asia. So we show them and say, oh, okay, so bring it down and let's put it this way and let's do it this way because once I intercode everybody together, I need to have unity there. Wow. Now, your, your story here has a lot of social themes, like you mentioned before, um, you know, like, uh, as the trailer suggests, you know, like uh, guns, uh, domestic violence, and so on. Um, why is it so important to, uh, to basically try to put a lot of this stuff into a film like this? Because I was trying to mirror what was happened to, to, to the society and how human behaves in this kind of situation. You know, I was witness of, of, of seeing a gun shop with a, with a, with a, a huge crowd uh, on, on, on way to get in and buying guns or going to the supermarket and, and the toilet paper, the famous toilet paper was gone and, and things like that. And, and, and as a filmmaker and as an artist, you, you are wondering, why are we behaving like this? I mean, toilet papers were because we need to control something at least, at least the toilet papers. And so you start, you know, doing some research and saying, why are we doing this? Why are we behaving like that? Or why my neighbor is so angry, you know, or so aggressive with me or, you know, and, and I love to explore those kind of things because, because I like to, to capture the essence of the human being. So when, uh, when we actually watch it, it's going to bring back a lot of memories for, for every single person because everyone's going to relate to this quite easily, no matter where they are in the world. Right. And, and like, for instance, we mentioned about the Olympics that were postponed. Now the Olympics are going to happen. But at some point, I have a rough call that I send it to a friend of mine. And she calls me crying, says, you know what, Sergio, I cannot watch this. This is too close from home. <laughs> so I was like, uh, wow, so this is not the moment to, 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 to put this film away. Now that, 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 that seems like we have some hope and, and the vaccines are here, now we see the, 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 the stories, you, you can see it in a different way, you know, you can literally see it, that, oh yeah, I can't relate. I remember when, when Trump says that, or I remember when the Olympics were canceled, or I remember what happened with this. Now it's a different perspective. Now you tie it all together with uh, pregnancies um, in its own way. Is that, is that like the big question of like, would you ever bring a child into this world today? Yeah, because I just, I've been talking to, to, to some young women about that and says, what do you think? I mean, ha has that changed your, your concept? And most of them says, yes. I'm, I've been thinking it twice about bringing a, a child to this, to this new reality or whatever you want to call it. And uh, so that's the main question of the movie is what is going to happen with the new generations, no? Like, like uh, my son graduated in, in, in the middle of the pandemic. So what is the future of that kid, you know? I mean, he's going to graduate now. He's going to have to find a, a job online and, and stay at home. And it's a different world, you know? Part of the, of the, the journey and the experience was to adapt as a filmmaker to do that, to, to try to come up with this, with this uh, story. Well, let me, uh, let me ask you this. I guess one of the things about uh, people worry about pandemic films is whether pandemic films will actually last, you know, like five to 10 years from now. Do you think a film like this would, would actually last because, uh, because it's so relatable or do you think it, it's just basically just the near term that people will show interest? I think the, in, in particular, Blur's Day, it's, it's, a, it's a time capsule. I do believe that you're gonna watch this film in a couple of years and you're gonna say, wow, I relate to that. I remember that, wow, we were so wrong in this or, or you know, the way that the governments uh, react, the way that uh, we react as a human beings. So I think uh, that's why I, from the very beginning, I say we have to make this movie because we need to capture this moment. This is a unique moment in, in, in human history. And I want my kids and my grandsons to see it and says, wow, you really went through that, <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> the only reason why I was bringing up that subject was because you 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 wrote you wrote a fascinating movie I want to say 15 years ago called A Day Without a Mexican, right. and uh, and I I remember watching that. And I, I wanted to circle back to that uh, because it's it is nearly 15, 16 years later. Do you think do you think a film like that still resonates today, or do you think that like like it needs updating? A day without a Mexican more than ever today. You know, I mean, it's just like uh, yeah, I, I co-wrote that one with Sergio Arau and Jarelia Dismendi, who are my my brothers and my my super friends. And uh, I've been telling them, we have to do the second day without a Mexican or something like that, you know, or, or the day without the Filipinos or the day without whatever. So, so, so we get appreciated, you know, it's what, what will happen when you take away something that is so essential, you know, and, and, and try in, in every single film that I do is try to give voice to the voiceless or you know, to try to, to be visible to the invisible, to all the, those guys that work behind the scenes and behind the kitchens and behind that, to, to, to be appreciated about it. And I, I, with the day without a Mexican, it was about um, immigration, right? What happened if the Mexicans uh, are disappeared from California, the economy crashes. Uh, in, in another film that I did is called uh, Intolerance No More. It's about police brutality in Los Angeles, you know, an encounter with an African-American and, and a white police guy. And what happened in that? And we did that one three years ago. So, so it was, it's not what was like, a, oh, I'm going to take the opportunity. We were, you know, because it's a, it's a problem, unfortunately, it's a problem that affects uh, uh, African American communities, uh, Latino communities, and all minorities, you know, for long, long time ago. So, so every time that I go into a film and I, I, I try to 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 create character driven films and social justice films, something that tells about the story, because I do believe with films we can change the world. Absolutely, I, I actually noticed those uh, things um, from. From uh, you know a day without Mexican to even a Blur's Day, that uh, that they're they're always a social commentary. So so you're you're hoping when people actually watch this, they will have a fresh new perspective on, on something different. At least to to ask you the, the the question if you are living a better world than the, than the one you find. Ab absolutely. Well, that's terrific. Well, I I certainly hope that uh, you do do a, a second day without without a Mexican. I mean, it, it, it would have been perfect when uh, when Trump was still in office. We I know, I know. No, we missed that opportunity, but, but hopefully it will come. It will come, you know. <laughs> I mean, you, you can continue. You can do a TV series, you know, and, 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 and some, uh, a lot of seasons uh, because it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a subject matter that affects everyone. Absolutely. I, I, found, I found that film hilarious. And one more thing before I let you go. How did you come up with the name Blur's Day for the title of your film? You know, uh, we, were, we were looking for titles and, and everything sounds so cliche. And then Blur's Day, it, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a word that, that, that we all relate to because we always say, that, is this a Saturday? It was, it's Monday, what, what day is it? So when, when I hear about Blur's Day in just one word, and I haven't found another word like that in a different language, but Blair's Day is like a perfect, you know, it shows what these guys were going through. Blair's Day, every single day was a Blair's Day. You know what? That's a good, that's a good title. I just tell everybody every day is Monday. So that's, <laughs> that's exactly. how it is for me. Exactly. Well, Sergio, hey, thank you uh, for this conversation. Congratulations for Blair's Day and uh, congratulations for uh, show showing this uh, film uh, tomorrow. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully, it, it, I invite you and, and your audience uh, Saturday, four o'clock, Chinese Theater. And thank you very much for, for, for supporting independent filmmaking and Latinos especially. Thank you. I really appreciate it. No, thank, thank you for making these uh, social justice films. And um, thank you for uh, bringing awareness of all the, these different issues. All right. Take care. Next time, Sergio. Bye now. Ciao.